Summer Shines, and we have a crazy dream of moving our family of four, us, we're two little people, onto a, a boat. boat for a year. And doing the Great American Loop. Woo! So Mark, would you like to explain what the Great American Loop is? Why yes, Cinda. The Great American Loop is a circuitous route of the eastern seaboard of the United States. And it's Canada. And Canada. It's about 6,000 miles from Florida up to Canada, over the Great Lakes, down roughly the Mississippi, hug the coast of the Gulf of Mexico, through the middle of Florida, and back up. Or the tip of Florida. But it makes a loop, hence the name, the Great American Loop. More people <laughs> summit Everest every year then complete the loop. About 150 boats. Complete it every year. And we hope to be one of them next year. But unlike Everest, this is high adventure, low, low risk. risk. <laughs> Which is key. Okay. Which basically means we could highly embarrass ourselves, like crashing into something or running into somebody, but it's probably gonna happen. chances of us mortally okay. wounding ourselves. So, so in order to do this loop, we've got to buy a boat which i think is a whole nother video yeah we've got and, and there's lots of constraints on the boat so we'll talk about that we have to move on to the boat we're gonna have to educate our children sell a house we don't have to but we probably to. will sell our house which is crazy and then um you're gonna keep working he's yep. gonna keep painting i'm gonna keep working so we're most likely gonna have a tutor with us on our boat and hopefully kids have to keep learning Hopefully we'll set sail in March of 2021, 21. but that's all kind of dependent. <laughs> that's all kind of dependent on Canada and whether or not it opens for Americans to come in. Because it's 2020 and there's a pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. Dream scenario. We will get on the boat in March, complete the loop in November, and then go spend the rest of the school year in the Caribbean. <laughs> so in an ideal world, we will hop on a boat, like let's just say around March of 21, right? somewhere around Palm Beach, and we'll head up Florida. the Florida, we'll head up the intercoastal all spring, learning all the great... Intercoastal waterway, waterway, which is a river. That's the key to the Great Loop. Is, is it a river? It's a waterway. It's a waterway. It's not the open ocean. Yes. So we are, we are always within sight of land, with, except for except for one little crossing yes. in Florida. And we'll head up the intercoastal. We'll learn all the history of the Eastern Seaboard, which will be great for our kids. Statue our, of Liberty. Yeah, well, then on Memorial Day, we'll hit Statue. We'll hit New York City. And we'll spend the night by the Statue of Liberty. And then we'll hang left, and we'll go up the Hudson River. And then we'll spend the summer, hopefully... In Canada, and, eh? <laughs> Canada. And there's apparently some amazing places up there. And we're going to do a lot of locks. How many locks? Mm, it's a lot. A lot of locks. A lot of locks. Uh, and then around Labor Day, we're going to hit Chicago, and we're going to drop down on the river systems. Now, people have done the loop and everything from a jet ski to a 70-foot yacht, so there's a lot of variables Variant. there. There's one requirement is that your boat cannot be taller than 19 feet. Can I use my chart? Inches. Yes. So here are the requirements or the constraints for your vessel. Well, there is a fixed bridge outside of Chicago. There you are. <laughs> that is 19 foot six. So no matter what you're on, a jet ski, a pontoon boat, you got to be yacht. able to go under the bridge if you want to do the whole loop. So you got to go, oh, under it, yeah. and some of this stuff can fold down. Sailboats do it, but they have to take their mast down to get Dismast under it. Dismast it. Yes. And um, then uh, some areas you can't be too deep, but draft, or how deep the water is under, the boat is under draws. the water. So. so that's about five feet. You can be more, but you miss out on a lot of amazing things. Mm -hmm. And then 60 feet is, I mean, you can do... People have larger done it in larger vessels. But 60 feet, you kind of become a pain to the marinas that you want to stay in. Well, and you there, get too big. There are some restraints on some locks in um, Canada as, in terms of the length. Also, if you don't know, when you stay at a marina, you pay per foot. So the longer your boat, the more expensive it is to stay at a marina. But we won't be at a marina every night. We will be anchoring a lot as well. Oh. Listening. Okay, so Mark, how many miles? 
roughly 6,000 miles oh, to good. do the whole let, loop. Let me see if I can pepper you with questions. Um, how long does it take to do the loop? Uh, people have done it in as little as six weeks. Really? But we don't want to do that. We are going to do it continuously. A lot of people will do it in segments. Like they'll do a couple months and then go home and then do it. We are going to live on the boat for the year. Roughly, it'll take us a year. Okay, you ready? How many states? Do you know how many states and provinces are in the loop? Uh, You're cheating right now. Fifteen. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to go through Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, New York, Vermont, Quebec, Ontario, Michigan, Wisconsin, Illinois, Missouri, Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi. That's a lot. And the kids will get to see all that and learn about all the history of each state. And all. I mean, it's a, it's a living history lesson. And you can, start, you can start the loop anywhere. We're starting in Florida because that just... It would help to show the map of the loop. Are you going to put that I'm in? I'm going to lay that okay. on top. See? Uh, we're gonna get on to we're gonna talk about boats in our next video. Yes. Why are we doing the loop? Because it's there. Years ago, like ten years ago, twelve years ago. I feel like longer than that. It was way pre kids, and I think it was pre trying for kids. So that was like pre two thousand eight. It was three at sea. I Is saw that, a family. Is that what started it? Mm -hmm. On YouTube, and three at you, sea. Shout out to the Bessemers. And then you bought a book. And then I bought a book called Honey, I Bought a Boat. Uh -huh. And the Honey, I Bought a Boat was the wife, not the husband. And they ended up doing the loop. And they had never, they had been on a friend's boat once before, and they did the whole loop. And now they are the founding members of the AGLCA. A great The American Great Loop Cruisers Association, which is a great resource. I think we will use it a lot. Um... So anyway, that's what started this crazy thought, oh, probably 15 years ago. Yeah, so we've been wanting to do this for a very long time. When we finally had kids, we decided ideally when they're like in second and fourth, third and fifth would be our prime time to do it. Now, just with the way the world is, we've decided let's go ahead and do it. Our kids are really strong swimmers. Um, we think they're old enough. They're still a little young. So they're six and eight right now, but... As I say, they're small enough to be compact for boat life, but, and they still like us, uh -huh. and we're still cool, that will disappear, we'll and they'll get bigger. Oh. So we have to, um, you know, now is the magic spot, and the world is so magical to them. So to go on the boat, and to live this floating lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Now, it's gonna be fun. There are gonna be periods where it's not fun, and there are gonna and be that's, tears. That's, li that's, life. <laughs> and that's, that's life here life. in our house, too. And they're going to see us react to stressful situations and learn from how we do it. Hopefully they will learn some good things. And they will learn how to weather a storm. Literally. Literally weather a storm and that they can get through it. And the impact that that will have on their future, we think, is... Well, and the monumental. history they're going to learn and the skills they're going to learn. And um, yeah, we're pulling them out of school, but, you know, the pandemic pulled them out of school. And they, you know, we learned great things then, too. So... Yes. Like that's that's, that's why we want to do it. Now, I think another important thing that we need to talk about is we do have some boating experience. Yes. We uh, we have had roughly 200 hours. Here's our ship's log. And we have had experience on 40-foot-plus well, boats. So, so we want. We both grew up on lakes, so we know lake boats, which is totally different than large cabin cruisers. Um, on an ocean or a tidal waterway. Yes. Um, with markers. But we went to the Chapman School of Seamanship. We are graduates of the CPC 1000 no. course. Oh, no. We went there and I was pregnant with Belle. 12, morning. 2012. Was, was it 12 or yeah. 11? It was 11? Anyway, Fall somewhere around. around there. We went to, we did a week long um, training school, intensive school, which was great. And then we've had experience um, on large boats, captaining them. Um, through the intercoastal a bunch. Yes. So we don't have a ton of experience, but we have enough that it was probably dangerous. Everyone we departed with came back. There were no large holes in the boat. Nope. Um, we never ran aground. We never ran aground. Well, we did with my dad once, but that was his We fault. weren't driving the boat. <laughs> Sorry, Walter. Anyway, so people have done it with zero experience. Um, you know, obviously it's great to have a lot of experience. We're going to learn a lot. We will probably hire a captain for the first week just to make sure we get our sea legs back. 
I get really seasick, so that's going to be an adventure, but most intercoastal waterways are, are calm. It's the Great Lakes that are going to get hairy. They're going to get green. <laughs> and I think Rex might get a little green, too. That's so going to be fine. Um, what else do we have? Oh, can Somebody asked, can you bring a pet on the Great Loop? So sure. a lot of people do it. If you know us, um, our sweet old dog passed away two years ago, and we have tried really hard not to to get a replacement dog because we think it'll be easier on the loop without a pet. Yep. Um, There's going to be way too much going on to have to worry about pottying a dog and putting the dog in the dinghy and going on land and pottying it and doing all that yeah. stuff. And some people have their dogs potty and poop on a little patch of fake grass on the boat. Right? Yeah, it's totally doable, but we decided since we were between dogs um, that we would wait. We've been fostering puppies, which has been awesome and really hard not to adopt one, but that's where we are. But we also think we have fish. there's going to be this dog that adopts us along yeah. the way. Well, most of the people who do the loop mm -hmm. are retired and much older than we are. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> we're bringing down the average. We're going to be perhaps some of the youngest, if not the youngest, and we're really not that young, uh, people doing the loop. Well, not dissing them, but it just takes time. Like you are unplugging from the world and most people that can do that are retired. Yes. So we're not retired. We are going to continually work on the loop. And we're going to educate. I mean, our kids are still in school. So um, that's why we need to have a tutor because that will just make everybody There's going to be a bunch of retired people on the loop. So now apparently we're going to make tons of friends. Like the boat, you, you team up with boats because you start kind of all traveling segments together and seven boats all start doing legs every day and you get to be this you know traveling group of boaters mm -hmm. oh like logistics how do we handle mail we'll get into all of that but it's total i i, I mean i think anybody could do this it it we're fortunate that we both can work anywhere um it the the extravagance and the luxury of this um, depends on how you want to do it. Like I said, people have done it in a jet ski, not real luxurious. I would like to not be camping, but we'll be some blend in between and we're still working the whole time. So it's not a year vacation, it's a year adventure. And we're gonna ride the fine line between a boat that is almost too big and one that is doable because this is gonna be home for a year plus and I say we all have to have escape space so that when we're all living in tight quarters we can disappear somewhere. That might be up on the top on the flybridge, it may be in the room, but the larger the boat for escape space, the better, but we can't be too large. What are you most excited about for the loop? Uh, most excited about just watching the kids' faces as we pull into all these different places and just the scenery is always going to change. Look around that corner. I mean, every bend of, of the river is going to be like something new for them to look at. What are you most worried about? For the, the obvious of running into something or something. crashing the boat. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm worried about that too. So I have a tides and, so, and so, currents. So, currents are so scary. Confession time. I get super stressed out when we're docking and I would much prefer to be down below not watching any of it. It's like when I when people move really heavy furniture I can't, can't watch. Be, you're gonna, I can't do that. You can't me. escape. Um, so that's what you're most worried about. Yeah. Any other like thoughts on doing the loop? It's gonna be amazing. Decade long dream coming true. Anyway, so that's the great loop in a nutshell. We hope it will be a grand adventure. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll do our best to answer. Um, you know, we've got a few months of preparing. I mean, we've been thinking about this and taking notes on this and educating ourselves. I've been looking at boats for, for 12 years. years. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's like really about to happen. We've hired our boat broker. It, it's, it's happening. I'm like a dog that catches a car that he's been chasing. I don't know what to do with it. Anyway, so follow <laughs> along if you want to, you know, be part of this adventure, like and subscribe. And we'll also, I'm sure, post on Instagram at the Boomer Shine. And Come on the loop! And next up, let's talk about our boat!